Hello everyone. Today we are going to do a very quick revision on Form 1 Mathematics, Chapter 7, Linear Inequalities. So we go straight away to the question number 1. Fill in the blanks with the inequalities symbol. So in this chapter, actually you learn four symbols. The first one is less than. Second one is greater than. The third symbol is less than or equal to. And the fourth symbol is greater than or equal to. Since the values is given, so they cannot be equal, so we don't have to use these two symbols. We just have to use these two symbols. So 2 is greater than or less than negative 5. 2 is greater than, so we pick this. So 2 is greater than negative 5. Negative 4 is greater than negative 7. And 18 is greater than negative 1. Question number 2. Represent x greater than negative 5 and x is less than or equals to, neg uh, to 3 in number line form and state all the possible integers of x. So first we draw a number line. So we have this number line. Then we write down the values which is shown here. So since 3 is greater than 5, so 3 will be here. Okay, negative 5 will be here. So x is in between negative 5 and 3. And x is greater than negative 5, so we draw a circle here. And then a line pointing towards, going towards right hand side. And x is less than or equal to 3, so if, if there's an equal notation here, so the dot is a solid dot. And then you connect the lines. This is how you show this inequality in the form of number line. And now you have to state all the possible integers of x. So this line here represents all the possible number of x. So it means that all the possible number of x is in between negative 5 and 3. But we only want integers. So what are the integers in between here? We have from negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and because this is a solid, uh, solid dot, and this symbol here denotes that x is can be equal to 3, so x can be 3 as well. Question 3. Write a linear inequality for the following situations. A. There are more than 25 students in class 1A. So how many students are there in class 1A? We don't know yet. So we use x to represent the number of students in class 1A. And there are more than 25 students. So it means x is more than 25. So x is greater than 25. The number of watermelons that Madam Yong can sell each day is not more than 10. So we, the number of watermelons, we let w to represent the number of watermelons. And it's not more than 10. Not more than 10 means less than or equals to 10. Okay? Not more than 10 means it can be 10, it can be 9, 8, 7, 6. So W is less than or equals to 10. Madam Lu bought at least 5 books. So how many books he, she bought? The number of books we let B to be the number of books. Actually, you can use any unknowns, X, Y, Z, any unknowns, any alphabets, any symbols. So at least five books means she bought five or more books. Five or more means greater than or equals to five. Question D. The maximum score of a test is 50. So maximum means the greatest score is 50. The largest score is 50. So it cannot be more than 50. So the score of a test must be less than or equals to 50. Now we, go, now we come to the solving part. Solve here means find the possible values of x. Actually, we just uh, solve this as in what we've learned in linear equations. But of course, there is one big difference, which I will, which I will tell you when we come to that part later. Okay, first... 2x minus 11 is less than or equals to 3. So in order to find the value of x, we need to move the values. So negative 11, we move it here, becomes 2x 
less than or equal to 3, negative becomes positive. So you get 3 plus 11 is 14. 2 multiplied by x. So you want to move the 2 here, becomes division 14 over 2. When you divide, you divide 14 with 2, since 2 is a positive value, nothing changes to the symbol. So x less than or equals to 14 over 2 is 7. Now we come to this part. Since there are two x here, we try to move so that the x are together. So we move 3x here, you get 2x minus 3x. And then the positive 2, we move the other side, you get negative 5 minus 2. 2x minus 3x is actually 2 minus 3, negative 1, so negative x. When you plus or minus with the numbers, no changes to the symbol. Negative 5 minus 2, you get negative 7. So in order to get rid of this negative sign, what is actually done here is we divide both sides with negative 1 for both sides. So when we divide both sides with negative 1, so you see what happens, negative 1, negative 7 over negative 1. Negative divided by negative, you get a positive, so you, in the end you get x, and a negative 7 divided by negative 1, you get 7. But when you divide or multiply with a negative number, the direction of the symbol will change from here, from this to this. So in the end, you get x is greater than or equals to 7. So since this is a fraction, in order to make our calculations easier, we move 3 first. Since this means divide, division, since this means division, when we move the 3, it becomes multiplication. 1 minus x is greater than 3 multiply x minus 2. So x minus 2 is in the brackets. When you multiply or divide with a positive number, nothing changes to the symbol. So we move negative 4 here, it becomes division. So when you divide with a negative number, the symbol has to change. Uh, so it actually becomes this. So the final answer is x less than 7 over 4. Now we try to solve the following simultaneous linear inequalities. So there are two inequalities, both with the same unknown. So to solve this, we simplify both inequalities first. So we simplify this first, you get this. Then we solve this part, uh, we simplify this part as well. Okay, in order to solve this, you need to draw a number lines for both of these inequalities. So here we have 7, which is greater than negative 2, so I write the 7 here. Negative 2 is smaller, I write it here. Don't forget the arrows. Now, x is less than or equals to 7. So on top of 7, because of this equal here, we use a solid dot. Less than, so we draw an, an arrow pointing towards the left to show x is less than 7. And here with x is greater than or equals to negative 2. So it's a solid dot again. Greater than means x is x has the values larger than negative 2, so pointing towards the right hand side. Then we try to find what we call the co common region. Common region is the area where the two lines what we call it as like uh, overlap. Yeah? So for this part, if you look at this part, the two lines overlap. So this area here, we call this area common region. So the x values within this area, which is from negative 2 to 7, are the x values which satisfies both inequalities. So uh, how do we represent this uh, common region in an inequality form? So this area here, x. So this area is in between negative 2 and 7. So x is greater than or equals to, because of the solid dot, negative 2, 
and x is less than or equals to 7 because of this solid dot. So this is the answer. So this inequality represents this area where the two lines overlap. And the values of x in between these two values are the values of x which satisfy both inequalities. We try again. So again, we have two inequalities with the same unknown. That's why we call this simultaneous linear inequalities. So we simplify this. So we have both of these inequalities. We draw the number line. 6 and 10, so 6 will be here, 10 will be here. m is greater than 6, greater than 6. m is less than or equals to 10. Less than means smaller, so the values to the left. Now these two lines overlap in this area where we call this as a common region. So this common region can be represented by the inequalities. x is greater than 6 and less than or equals to 10 where the values in between 6 and 10 including the 10 itself satisfy both inequalities question number 6 Siti has 200 in her bank and she saves 125 ringgit Malaysia every month determine the minimum number of months her saving can exceed 1450 ringgit Malaysia so initially she has 200 and the minimum number of months, so number of months are the things that we are looking for. So we let N represent the number of months. So for every month, she saves 125. So after N month, she can save 125 times N. So initially she has 200. And then she saves 125 every month for N months. And we want it to exceed, which is more than 1450. So now, since we already formed the first step, so in order to find when is it, we need to solve for n. means the minimum number of months her saving can exceed is equals to 10 months so she need so she need 10 months in order for her total savings to exceed 1450 so that's it thank you very much